Hey guys, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Bikini in the Brain. I'm here with the lovely Ashley Kaltwalser. Mm -hmm. Hi, <laughs> hi, that's what they call me. Yes, and we got ourselves a, a fun topic for you today. A doozy. Um, basically about, you know, unleashing your greatness and like, you know, what it takes and reaching down, deep down. And I think there's no one better to, to talk about that really than Ashley, who is, I think, reaching her greatness and and and. I think reaching close to your potential, you know? I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying out here. I'm trying my best. <laughs> and before we go into that, speaking of which, potential wise, um, you know, we're releasing this. We always release this a few days late. And we just came back last weekend from the Titans Pro, mm -hmm. where Ashley got another dub. I got a dub. Yeah. What the heck? How did yeah. I get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this actually puts her. In the record books as the number two all-time winning IFBB pro in the history of the sport, um, already being the most winning bikini pro in the history of the sport, but now the number two of all-time IFBB pro in the sport, only surpassed by Dexter Jackson, <laughs> only by two wins. And uh, <laughs> it's not the same, but yeah. Uh, I will always give that disclaimer. It's not the same, but yeah. <laughs> Every, and, <laughs> on uh, paper <laughs> and even uh even jay cutler was talking about it the other day he said yeah. no one's gonna no one's ever gonna beat that record like he said it the other day so it's pretty cool not for a hot minute but i'm just getting started you know yeah. so you know yeah maybe this maybe this record will be beatable but not her final record that's gonna be the one that's gonna be the i want to make it unbeatable yeah i want to make it untouchable yeah it's it's gonna get crazy because you're not you're not on a decline at all. I know, <laughs> That's for damn sure. Yeah, I'm just I got so much motivation too. Like you have no idea. Adam had to like hold me back. Yeah. I almost entered in the sh another show this weekend. You know the third one in the row. I was like I had my contract. <laughs> I was ready to go. I was sending. I was annoying you early, early yeah. yesterday morning. I was like, what do you think? I can I do this? Do you think it's a good idea? Like look at this. Like and I did my check in and everything measurements and I was like. I'm just, I'm torn. Should I do this? I really want to, but I don't know if it's smart. You kind of had to like hold me back a little bit, which that's it good because that's what coaches are for. Yeah. It was, a, you know what it was? It was the third. Yeah. So yesterday we woke up like eight o'clock and I had like check-in pictures, all these things from Ashley. And like she's like 15 text messages. Yeah, she's like, what do you think about this show this Saturday? The one in Texas. And uh, we just went back and forth. The only, the only problem is, is that when we, when you do three in a row, it's really hard to nail the third one. They get, like, if it's on a weekend basis, it gets progressively harder. And to, that's a week to week. If it was two weeks in between, yeah, different no story. Yeah, but seven days later, because, you know, the problem is, is when you do so many, um, you don't work out usually Thursday and Friday. Like, we usually don't work out. Well, sometimes we will, but it's pretty rare. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Yeah. So, so I'm working out three days a week. Yeah, so it's <laughs> like you do three, yeah, three workouts in three weeks. So in 21 days, you get nine workouts. It's and hard sleep to, schedule's all messed up. You yeah. still got that tan on you trying to scrub off and the whole carb situation because your carbs are fluctuating and it's like your body's a little bit unpredictable at that point, yeah. I would say. Like, uh, you know, we carb up a little bit for a show and then you try to get the carbs out and then carb up again. And it's like kind of like a, a little bit risk. So I always like to say it like this, like it's like a thread, right? And it's like that the more shows you do in a row, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And then it's just like, oh, yeah. nope, you're looking worse now. Yeah. So you kind of had to put me in my place. You said you're looking a little noodly in the arms, <laughs> and I agree. I was looking a little noodly. Look so. a little noodly, yeah. So the problem is when you work out three times in a week, you know, you, to creating the space to get the carbs to absorb is a hard thing, you know. Like, yeah, we we know she's getting flatter, but you have to work out enough times to be able to like create the space to absorb them too, and create the the stimulus to absorb those. And it just seems to be harder the progressively you get. So, looks like. Maybe we'll figure out a recipe to do a show and work out nine times in 21 days and figure it out. But it's, <laughs> so far, it's been pretty right? it's been pretty elusive. But yeah. I will say though, um, considering the worst you've done with doing that is placing second, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, the New York <laughs> Pro. That's kind of what happened. We tried to do that three show in a row kind of thing week yeah. to week to week, and I was looking so much like smaller by the third one. Yeah, You're... and not in a good way. I think my waistline looked good at New York Pro, but I just I was very very petite. I was just like shrinking and not because I'm like necessarily losing muscle. It's not, not, it's not exactly how it works. It's just yeah. flattening and depleting. So, you know, kind of learned our lesson and I was like, <laughs> Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. But then I get so excited when I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to be bored this week. And I just want to compete again. I just want to keep going. Like I'm not tired. The thing is, is like, 
mentally I'm not fatigued at all. I, yeah. I could do them every day. Yeah. But like sometimes you have to hold me, you have to hold me back <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Like Ashley, for your best interest, let's you know take an extra week here to like get in some good lifts, get in some carbs, and you know let your body chill out a little bit because I got to be on my game for the next show. Yeah. Which is the Patriots show here in the hometown of Vegas, which is gonna be so awesome because yeah. man, we've been going all over the place, yeah. plane rides galore. East Coast, layovers, delayed flights. I went to Hawaii. Holy crap. That it's was be, a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be nice just to be like, oh, yeah, driving. And I believe the venue is literally like five minutes from here. Oh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. The Alexandria Hotel. Oh, yeah. That is down there. I can ride my scooter literally? there. Literally? <laughs> you don't even need a car. You could walk if you wanted yeah. to. But you're going to scoot there. But isn't that nice? Like, okay. It's more like relax. Like, yeah. I don't have to worry about, like, forgetting if I, if I forgot anything. I can just get it from home, like I could go home the night of the show, like it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, and I heard from two little birdies that the Olympia is gonna come back to Vegas. So yeah, yeah. not this, not this year. year, not this but. year, but next year, I heard from two birdies. So hopefully that's, those birdies are correct. Right now it's just, just talk, you know, chirp, but chirp. yeah, so that'd be cool. And I heard USAs are, gonna do, are going to as well. Like they actually oh, don't wanna nice. keep USAs, that's for sure. They don't wanna keep USAs there, they're gonna come back here eventually. Nice. So so yeah, so we're gonna get some more action in Vegas coming up pretty soon. I think, I think next year is gonna be really banging in Vegas. So. It's going to be exciting. Um, anyway, so. Oh, and the Arnold list came out, and I got oh. invited. And the unique thing about the Arnold, okay, so if you guys weren't caught up, the Arnold Classic, they did decide to put it on, and it's like two weeks before Olympia, I believe, something like that. It's like September 25th, 26th. So I think that's two weeks before Olympia. Am I correct? Or is it one week? It's, oh. I think it's Wait. one one week or two weeks. Don't wanna... quote me on that. <laughs> but it's before the Olympia. Um, oh, no. I know, yeah, no, I was thinking of the Arnold UK. The Arnold yeah. UK is one, like, okay. one week. Yeah. So maybe I'm incorrect on that. So, but anyway, it's close <laughs> to Olympia. It's very close. I think it's two yeah. weeks. And then I think, if I'm right, it's two weeks, and then the Arnold UK is, like, one week. I yes. think that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. Sounds about right. Anyway, so the list came out. I don't know if you look through all the lists, but do you notice something? There's 10 people on it. 10, 10, 10, 10. Oh, the whole way. Except for men's bodybuilding, I think, has, like, 12, which, rightfully so, if anybody deserves more, men's bodybuilding. Yeah. But... Um, that's different, right? Yeah, it's totally different. Holy moly. I actually kind of like it though, but then I'm, it's kind of weird because there's going to, the weird thing is it's going to be two call-outs. So that's what I don't like. It's just kind of like, eh, you know, kind of risky, right? Because yeah. it's like, what if I don't get in the first call-out or whatever? But that's the bad part. The good part is like, I like that it's a prestigious show. Yeah. There's, there's some... I think at the Olympia last year, so many girls, usually in bikini, there's so many girls at the Olympia. So many. Yeah. Like and I'm 40 just like, girls, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be nice to be like, okay, this is like the best of the best. Like, it's going to be... Yeah, there's some killers quick. in that show. Oh, God, yeah. It's not... Man. It's Here, listen. Just because there's <laughs> 10 girls doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's just the best of the best. Like, the yeah. cream of the crop. Issa, Laura Lee, oh, gosh, Jennifer, yeah. but, you. The only, the only... I think Janet's not in the... I don't think she's doing the yeah, just, Arnold. Just, uh, she's probably saving for Olympia, which is super smart. Just, yeah, and that, That's her show, so. In that top Defending. group. And the top, like, 10, I think it's just Janet... Angelica, Itala. Angelica, no. Is not in it. I'm saying oh. not in it. Janet, Janet, Itala, Angelica, Ashlyn, but Brina's there, and so was... Yeah, I yeah, don't I think know. that was the two, yeah. But so, anyway, I'm um, like, I'm just like so excited about it, yes. but nervous so, at the same time. It's a good group of girls. It's a really good group yeah. of girls. All so, those girls will be top 20 no matter what. It's kind, of like, it's kind of like in a way risky as well, because it could be a prediction of what the Olympia could be, right? Yeah. So it could be good and could it be bad. It could be good in the sense that like... Okay, if you need to fix something two weeks, you might be able to fix it or work on it at least, yeah. depending on what it is. Um, but also, it's bad because um, maybe it might ruin your confidence a little bit if you don't do as well and you know, well, I'm competing against the same girls two weeks from now. So, you know, it can kind of, yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, it has a double-edged sword to it, for sure. Yes, yeah. but either way. Happy just to be on stage. Yeah, but hey, we got top 10 at the Arnold no matter what. Hey, yep. what's up? <laughs> I just got to show up and I got top 10. Yeah, hey. There you go. <laughs> could never say that before. You could yeah. never do that because usually it's about 20, 18 or so, right? Something so it's like, like that. that. So anyway, that'd be fun. It's going to be a good Arnold. That's going to be exciting. Um, all the divisions are pretty pretty deep. They're all pretty deep. Yeah. I need to get into the Arnold, yes. Yeah. I mean, just to have, it just is crazy because there's only 10 people in it. But yeah, they're deep, man. I was looking at uh, Nick Strength and Power this morning, actually, and he was talking about the Arnold list in Classic being so deep, too. So there's some, yeah, some pretty cool stuff. There's two, like, two guys that are first call-out Olympians in the bodybuilding, too. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it should be a pretty exciting one. It sucks that they don't have the expo, but next year, mm -hmm. 
full board, expo, everything. So but it is good. back in my home state of Ohio. Yeah. So I'm probably going to visit my family. <laughs> yeah, where you came from and going into our next title, where you started and where everything kind of happened. Yeah. Which I think is cool to talk about because you are a small town girl. Akron, Ohio. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, small town girl who basically has like, created this dream world scenario for yourself. And I think that um, a lot of people who are in a similar scenario or even just in a big town still like just don't see themselves as ever being able to do that because it's so unrealistic when people like see it on paper. They're like, oh, I could never do that. And I think that's kind of the mentality of it. And I think that how you think and how you act and how you've earned these this like earned this luck, so to speak, um, really is the difference of the difference of you being where you're at, you know? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, genetics and luck and this and that. And I'm like, we don't know how much of the factor of that is. We know how hard she's worked. You know, that's the one, like, she's worked out her whole life, done sports her whole life. Like, maybe a lot of it's genetics, but maybe it's just through years of hard work that created a look that looks like it's genetics too. Mm -hmm. All right, so coming from a small town, Akron, Ohio, um, obviously you never thought any of this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't even know how someone like begins the journey of this mm -hmm. type of thing. Like they begin the journey of, um, getting into bikini and then having that belief. And I know that you you always say that you just wanted to win one show yes, and just wanted to get a pro card and then, and then you exceeded your expectations. But I guess like what, when we think about like the mental part of this, which I think is honestly, the more I do this, the, like the more I do this, the more of a mental game I realize it is. Like it's crazy how much of a mental game it is. Because, you know, I talk to pros all the time. I only work with a few, but I talk to pros like all the time. And um, the difference of, like it becomes more and more apparent, the difference of you versus most. Mm -hmm. Not all, but difference of, I would say a large majority of them where they will say they want it, you know? Oh. And then them actually acting like they want it. They Talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. So often. Like, yeah. So often. They'll be like all for it for like one prep, right? Yeah. 16 weeks. Yep. They're the 16 weekers, right? And you're like, okay, what about the rest of the weeks throughout the year? Like, yeah. what about the rest? But you're like a 52 weeker. Mm -hmm. You're not a, you know, at worst case scenario, you're a 51 weeker. Like, and even then, <laughs> that one week is like not that bad. So I guess that that's really the the, the differentiating thing. And I think that it's, it's crazy because you're like the nicest person and you get like the most flack probably from anyone because you like to compete, which is so oh, I crazy. I love it. Oh, it's so crazy. Bring that, it on. Tell me more. Yeah. You know what's crazy is like in, <laughs> in, in, in any other. You laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in any other sport, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't imagine like being a professional athlete and then being in the, being in the locker room one day and being like, oh, LeBron showed up today. Why did he show up? Like. Let's what? complain about it. Let's, I'm not going to play today because LeBron's here. I just, just, I'm going to put a post out. You don't need to score all the buckets, LeBron. There's other people here too. Like, no, dude, you playing professional sports. Like, <laughs> that's it's a professional sport. Is this crazy town? What's going on? You play in so, your barrels and yeah, know, it's, go for it. <laughs> it's crazy, right? So you, you do get the most heat for it, but you're the most passionate about it too, you yeah. know? And I think that, that that is the differentiating factor is that you don't have any quit in you and I don't know where that comes from like mm -hmm. do you have any insight to that or is it just like it's just how you are well I think it's a lot of like a mental endurance and you know gratitude I know that sounds super corny so going back to like you know people who complain that I compete too much I love it like bring it on tell yeah. me more that just makes me want to do it more <laughs> yeah. like tell me you don't want me to compete anymore and I'll probably do five more shows just because you said that <laughs> actually the first one of the first things in one of my first interviews this year was like, what's your goals for this year? And I said, to compete a lot and piss everyone off. <laughs> and I'm dead serious. It's just so motivating for me just because I'm just like unaffected, just brushing yeah. it off because, you know, whatever. I'm doing me and I'm happy. And that's, I'm, I'm here to, you know, compete, not to please others. But um, going also back, so mental endurance, you know, in bikini, it's very volatile. You can... Think that you look really good one day for a show and then you don't do as well as you think and then vice versa but you know i think a lot of times when people do find success they kind of start to lose sight of the little things that once made them happy okay you know i remember 
when I got my first sponsorship, it was free spray tans with liquid sun rays, and I still am with them. They're awesome. But, you know, I never forget that feeling of, oh my God, I got, I got a sponsorship. Like, <laughs> and now I have like all these uh, endorsements and sponsorships, and I, you know, I never forget what that feels like. And I always say this every time I step on stage, off stage too. The feeling of winning still feels like my first win I've ever had. There is like, it never gets boring. Yeah. It never gets old. I never take it for granted. I never just brush it off. Like, it's so exciting to me. And I love it. And I'm just like, I guess the motivation I have just comes from like passion. And I've always been an athlete, right? So this is common for me to like keep competing and yeah. keep going on and on, even if it didn't go my way, you know, even if a track meet didn't go my way one week, I didn't just like sit there and be like, hmm, I hate this. I'm not doing track anymore. You know, <laughs> I just keep going. You got to fix it. You got to learn from all the mistakes you make and push forward. Yeah. You know, I bet you never said that fast girl is here. I'm not competing today. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Or, yeah. or just complain to everyone that yeah. they're competing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that didn't happen in track. Nope, and doesn't happen anywhere else. So no. I don't think it should happen here either. No, no. It's well, you got all the support from all the all the people up top too. They're yeah. like compete all the time. Yeah. If you look like, if you look like crap, we're gonna score you like crap. If you look yeah. great, you're gonna win. That's what's exactly. gonna. And that's what they always say. They're like, I don't care if you do 20 shows and you win all 20. <laughs> if you look like you're gonna win, then you'll win them. If you look like you're not, you're not. You know. So mm -hmm. it's like that's how they always are. So I think I'm glad that they're all on on board yeah, with that too. Of course, so, I think they, anybody that's you know. <laughs> That isn't weak-minded thinks that way, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, so. especially in professional sports. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think, I don't know where that, you know, where that comes from from you, though, but it's it becomes more apparent, you know? It's funny because, like, I'll, I'll see a girl and I'll be like, oh, she could be the next the next one, the next one who's, like, going to do that, that type of thing. Like, she's got the mindset for it, this and that, and then you, like, give her, like, six months, eight months, whatever, and then it, it never works out that way. It's just such a hard... I've never seen anyone really like that besides, like, you know... Ronnie Coleman was the only one I ever talked about that kind of had that type of mindset where we talked about that one episode where he was like cheating on his diet was like, I mean, it was like, it's just not even a thought. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just not even a way of a possibility, you know? So it's pretty cool to see someone, but it, and it's also what I, what I hope that people realize from it. And um, when they're doing their own journey and their own, their journey, not just in the show, but in life too, is like the, you know, the, the spoils come from the effort, you know? And I, I hate... I hope that no one thinks that they came from anything else besides the true effort that you put in on a daily basis, which is equal this great result. Mm -hmm. And I think anyone can apply that to their life and use this life lesson. And it's kind of crazy to, like, I hear about it sometimes. And so I try to step back from it and I try to step back and look at it like what you're doing. And I'm like, it's pretty crazy to hear, like to actually witness what you're doing right now because you're like, every show that you do, you're basically watching history of our sport. And I don't know if you like realize the power of that either, but you gotta realize like, you're, you're the most winning bikini pro. So if you compete again and you win, um, and even if you can compete, it's still, you're like watching history happen in our sport. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't think, like it's crazy to like step back and look at that and you're like, okay, you're watching, you're watching greatness happen right now. Like this is something people are gonna talk about, you know? it's. It's watching Wayne Gretzky score 50 goals in a year. It's watching, you know, these types of things that you like are like, oh, Tom Brady's going to break the all-time passing record. Mm -hmm. Like, and everyone watches every game because this guy's going to break the record, right? Is he going to do it this game? Is he going to hit the passing record this game or whatever? And so it's like, it's crazy that that's you in bodybuilding, right? And people, you know, when it's like other sports, they think, oh, yeah, Tom Brady, he's been throwing football since he was in the womb and he was like, you know, he was, he's been like doing this and that. And like, that's what it takes to be great. Like it takes doing a hundred percent year round. It takes, you know, putting all your effort in. It takes realizing your weaknesses and focusing on them. And it takes these things. And the, the true amount of effort it takes to get to that level is like, I don't think people, I don't think people realize that. And I think that if they can watch it and they can learn from it and look at themselves and be like, okay, I do want that. Like, so the, we have some pretty dedicated listeners, you know, that'll be like, yeah. I want to be a pro, I want to be a pro. And like, that's what they think about and they want to be mm -hmm. the next you or whatever. Like, you need to understand that that's what it takes. And if your actions don't line up with that, you have no right to even to deserve that. You know, you don't have, you're not going to, it's not going to happen first off. And you have no right to request it or complain when you don't. You know, it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take an extreme 
effort. And it's going to take pain. It's going to take overcoming bad days and bad mental breakdowns, I'm sure, throughout the year because you've eaten chicken for the 400th time. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I just feel like because your light personality and how we just like go about our day every day and it's like just happening that we don't like take a step back and think about it. I don't know if you do that, but I try to like, I try to. Because one day it's not going to be there. You know, yeah. one day it's, it's going to, the journey will have to end eventually I one know. day. I mean, it's, it's years from now. We know yeah. that. <laughs> but it's like while you're on it, you have to step That's back and I be think. like, yeah. you have to like. Enjoy it. Do all you can with it. Yeah. You know, who, we're not promised next year. I mean, gosh. Yeah. Like I uh, had my eye surgery uh, last year before the pandemic thing. Um, but that was like an eye-opening experience that's a pun you know um, <laughs> <laughs> so I had strabismus eye surgery right and it, it's not LASIK so a lot of people like to like oh yeah I had LASIK and I was you know fine the next day no I had strabismus eye surgery so they had to go into both of my eyeballs cut the little muscles in there and tie them up and stitch them and very um yeah it was kind of ew, gross when you think about it but yeah. um it really put me out and I wasn't able to compete at the Arnold and that went that whole thing kind of I didn't really see it coming, you know? Yeah. Um, also another pun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so it's kind of like you never know what's going to happen. So we can break the leg or something. And I'm feeling great. I'm healthy. My motivation is freaking through the roof, man. Like, you can yeah, hold me I've back. Never, I'm so motivated. you got to hold me back. I've never seen you like this. I'm like, no, let's do the next one. I've I mean, before like I even this. step off stage for finals, like, what's next? I mean, we were, what is next? we were on the Let's way, go. we were on the sh way to, was it finals or pre-judging for mile high? And you were talking about the next one. Yeah. I mean, I think it was pre before judging. I think we were walking to judging and you were like talking about the, possibly we should probably do the one next week and maybe yeah. we should do or, oh, yeah. or it was like, yeah, was, your motivation is nuts right now. So, but it, that shows that it's like not, that's the thing you're, and when you talked about, you did talk about passion and like. Yeah. And that's what I say about my work too, is like, it's not work if you have passion for it. And mm -hmm. I think that that's the thing that like is the biggest differentiator for you is that it's never turned into work for you. It's never been like, oh, I got to do another show again. I got to yeah. do another. And for me, it's like, oh, I got to do another check-in again, like whatever, you know? So it's like when you do, when you do something you're passionate about for your living, then like, I think it's just so much easier. And it's kind of cliche because everyone always says that, but you have two people here doing it and like feel like they're not working you know what I mean it's like it's just a great it's just great it's just it a great is. a great life scenario you know it really is I have a really good life and I never forget that you know I never forget that and I never like to compare either because you know you see on like Instagram and TV and all, like people living so lavishly obviously I don't live like that but I've done a lot better for myself than I ever thought I yeah. could and I'm making money doing what I love and creating so many opportunities around doing it so I'm just like so grateful I think it just I never forget those little things little tiny things that a lot of times people on the top forget about because they've advanced so far and although i have advanced so far and you know i've done so much i never forget like those little things you know, a win or or even just you know a little freebie here and there or the fact that i get food delivered you know i'm just like how <laughs> did i manage to create this life it is so amazing to be me that's why I always say there's no other person I'd rather be than me because I'm just living my best life over here. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It is so much fun. And I think like being an athlete, I feel weird when I'm not training or competing for something. I've literally been in athletics since I was like four. I was a gymnast. Then I did track throughout college. So it's like all I know. And I'm so thankful that my parents got me into sports very young because I know how hard work is, you know. Yeah. So to me, this is just like, I don't know. I'm just like a fitness robot, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I like, I like, just like, you know, what's funny is I have, um, you know, what's funny? I had a, I had a email, I have a message the other day and someone wrote me and they're like, you know, I'm not even into fitness, but I listen to your guys' podcast for like motivation and stuff Aww. because they can like take it, they could take out from like your efforts and our efforts that we do to, to do this stuff. And I thought that was pretty cool to have that, that person like reach out. And I'm like, and I feel, and I hope that people, that's why I was like to push this. It's not just fitness because Fitness, like at this level, is it has a time stamp on it, you know, for it's an injury away, it's a, it's a whatever, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's a, it's years away where it's, something's going to happen eventually where you can't compete at this level, at that level for, and I think that people need to like learn the lessons from it more so than 
the actual just focusing on the sport of it, right? You need to like, it's both because it's, especially because it's such a mental game too, you know? And I, and I want, and I wonder like how else it affects people in like their work and their motivation and their this and that when like ever we finish an episode, I'm like, would that, would there be any lesson there for someone in life who's maybe having a hard time or trying to find something or maybe I've had, I, what I will say is this, one thing really cool is that we've had, I've had a few people leave their job and they say that it's because like, I realized I wasn't doing what I was passionate about and mm -hmm. I've been listening to this and I need to, I need to at least give myself the chance while I'm young or while I'm whatever and mm -hmm. like give myself the chance of like doing fitness for a living because that's what I'm passionate about. Right. I've heard that a few times, a few, few people wrote me on that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully if you guys are listening to that, let me know how that's going. Hopefully it's going good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, I think this definitely, our episodes can definitely apply to other aspects in life. And I always say, you know, everyone is, is born with a gift or a talent. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's up to you to kind of hone in on it and discover what it is that you are great at, but also love doing and kind of center your life around that, you know? So for me, it's fitness. It's what I love to do. And I just, you know, kind of created it for myself and just, you know, kept pushing through even whenever things didn't go so well for me. Take every like, you know, hurdle in life or a setback as a learning lesson because even though in, in the time it might seem like a horrible thing, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this, this happened, blah, blah, blah. What the heck did I do? In the future, you might come back to be like, I needed that. That was a learning lesson because I grew from it. And I think a lot of times people are too stubborn to kind of grow from mistakes or somebody that knows what they're doing, like, for example, judging or whatever, they refuse to kind of accept their advice, right, or yeah. their feedback because they think, no, no, I look great. What are you talking about? I should have won, blah, blah, blah. I'm not changing anything, you know? Yeah. So they kind of are, are too stubborn to kind of um, grasp onto that and then grow. And I think in, it's... You know, we live in our bodies, so we see ourselves a different way than other people see us, and especially the judges and people that have a good eye, like coaches, you know. So we don't see it ourselves, but you have to be open to kind of their criticism and critique to see what can be done to fix this. But again, can apply to anything in life. Yeah. So um, going going into that too, like and how we're applying these things to, to different things in life, I think that it's a good point that you point out when we talk about learning from failures. I don't, there's, there's actually like groups of people, like business groups and stuff. Um, Jeff Taylor was in one years back. I don't know if he's still in it. But like you had to, you had to have a business and then lose the business to even get in the group. And it was like, and it's all these like super successful like entrepreneur guys who have like failed and then learned from it and talk about that and like how they've grown from it. And I think that that every, every time, uh, I was actually talking to a girl today, um, this morning, Holly, and she was like, you can't beat someone who doesn't give up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that was, you know, I think that's a really good lesson, you know, how, how she goes. She's actually competing this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, but she's like, you can't beat someone who doesn't quit. You know, and I was yeah. like, yeah, that's, it's, it's true. And so all the times you're beat up in life is a learning lesson. I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me and just in coaching and life and business and whatever, you know, I've been down to nothing a couple times in life because I've tried doing these crazy things. Um, but I think that every time it's just like, you just learn from it, you grow from it, and then you put it in your repertoire of, of action, you know? But I wanna go into like another thing too, which is like the marvel of sports and how we watch them and why we watch them and like the human mind with it too, which is I think where, like how we define greatness, you know? And it's kind of, I was watching, um, I was watching, you know, right now it's, it's um, gymnastics is in, you know, the, the gymnastics. I, whenever, whenever the Olympics are on, that's what I watch. I like, that's my thing I watch. Mm -hmm. I love, that's probably, out of all of them, you know, that's what, hockey too, but, you know, yeah, that's always going to be kind of obvious who's the top guys are going to be there. But gymnastics, hockey, but for the most part, gymnastics. And then I also watch, like, I'll watch NASCAR too. And I think about, like, why do so many people like NASCAR? You know, it's the number one viewed sport. Really? Isn't that crazy? Hmm. But, um, and gymnastics too, why is it like, I can't relate to gymnastics, why do I like it? I have no, I have no, I've never even been to a gymnastics meet, you know what I mean? I've wrestled in hockey and, and, and I never, I have no, there's no reason, I was like, why do I like this? It doesn't make any sense, you know? And, um, and then I realized, and then I, in NASCAR too, I'm like, why do so many people like that? And I realized that, and you're kind of, you're doing it too, just it's a different way of doing it, but you're doing the same thing and that's why it's like, you're the anomaly and people are watching you and you have your people who are love you and the people who don't, you know, and you have like that, mm -hmm. you have that, you know, and it's like a, you have to like 
I was thinking about it. I was like, why is it, why is it like that? And it's like, and I'm, I'm victim of it too. You know, I watch gymnastics. It doesn't make sense. So, but I was like, okay, this is why, you know, when someone's watching NASCAR, they realize that these NASCAR drivers, like, it's not fun to watch a car drive around a track 100 times. Like, it's not, what's, it's, that's not an exciting thing. But they realize that these drivers are, like, putting themselves under this immense pressure, under this insane environment of heat, of extreme concentration, of extreme, like, level of pushing it to the absolute limit. And, like, they're literally pushing themselves on the brink of death every turn they take, every move they make for however long it takes to finish the race. And they're going to the absolute line of perfection and chaos and basically death, like, every, at every second that they're playing that sport. And it's the same thing with gymnastics. It's the same thing with with like all these like crazy top sports and the sports that we're really attracted to, you know, I realized that. And I was like, with gymnastics, you know, you have a girl and she scores like a, you know, she scores like a nine, six, nine, seven, and the next girl comes out. She's like, how am I going to beat that? You know, the only possible option, the only possible option to beat that is pushing yourself to that brink of chaos and injury and, <laughs> and perfection and hoping to just get through something that she's never pushed herself so hard to do before. And the same thing with NASCAR, you know, like they're, it's, if they're in the wall, if they make just a, if they just go a couple miles over where the, 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 the limit is, right. And we're like, and we're just on the edge of our seat. We're like, oh my God, is it going to happen? It's going to happen. Like, and it's like, just to watch it happen and you're watching greatness, like you're watching them push themselves harder than they've ever pushed themselves before. It's like, it just brings something out of you, like in the spirit of like, of your humanity where you're like, I know that's with, within me. And why am I not pulling that out of me? And where can I apply that? And where can I pull that out? And I think it just becomes like a, uh, like a self-recollection that we're not doing it and what greatness we could do yeah. in admiration of that extreme where we're like, man, that's, a, that's an impressive, amazing thing. And I wish, I know that I could do that and I want to do that. And that's why I love it so much because I'm watching it, but why am I not doing that? And it's like this like, it's like, it's because you have, you, if you think about it and that's, that's the only reason I can think why I like it. Only reason I can watch the NASCAR, right? Because you're watching this. And right now, the only like, and it sounds crazy because of this big setup, but like you're you're the one doing that in the sport right now. You know, you're the one competing all year, multiple years, pushing yourselves. Like people see the stage pictures and they see the the win or the loss or the whatever, and they're like, oh cool, she won another one, right? But like you're living that way every day. Like yeah. it's crazy to think about. A lot about. of like uh adrenaline in there you know yeah <laughs> so it's like you I don't know if you caught on to this but I, my catchphrase for this season has kind of been I gotta be fearless you know have you heard me say that yeah. a few times like there's been a this. few shows yeah. that I like question like should I do it or not and then I'm like wait a minute no I gotta be fearless you know because in order to get those W's I gotta accept those L's and learn from them so it's a risk each show to to kind of you know I guess risk my momentum, right? But you got to realize in bikini, especially, probably not going to win them all. Okay, yeah. it, in a perfect world, you'd win them all, smooth sailing. But it's not like that. It's like might win it, might not. I might win by like one point, might not. You know, so I kind of got to be fearless and kind of like block out what everyone else says because I know, like, the minute I lose, people will probably be happy, right? Yay, she finally. <laughs> um, and some people will be like, well, finally, or just kind of like, wow, who beat her or something. Yeah. So it's a lot of outside like voices and pressure sometimes, but I just kind of block it out and be like, you know what? The only reason why I'm competing is for me. So regardless of what everybody else says or thinks, I'm doing it for me because I freaking love it. This is like my life and I'm not afraid to say it. Okay. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I am. And I think like, I have that mindset like, well, why the heck not? You know, I'm healthy. I'm happy. I'm motivated. I, you know, I get my travel and accommodations paid for. I'm living the dream. I got to take advantage of it. It's not that I'm trying to like block other people from succeeding. That's, I don't even care. Honestly, I don't, I don't even, usually don't even look at the, the competitor list. I'm just like, whatever, I'll show up. Yeah. So like, it's, that's not the case, but I'm just like doing it for me. And I love to be like that. I love to be the example of the sport. I'm trying to make an example here. Yeah. Like you can do this for a long time, compete a lot, 
and have fun. It's not all miserable, okay? Of course, it's hard at times, but there's a difference between it being difficult and being miserable, right? Of course, anything worth having is difficult. It's going to be tough to achieve what you want, okay? That's what makes it desirable. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm not miserable. I'm happy. I'm pretty happy. I would yeah. say I'm the happiest I've ever been. Wow. Yeah. You know what? This year, I could, I could see that this year for sure because, like, you've, you're just something different about you this year for sure. Like, I think, too, like, the confidence is there more, too, this year, too. And, like, I don't know. It's just, you're just, every day, it's, like, it's just happy, like, Almost like too excited. I know you sometimes. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. It's just. It's. It's. It's an anomaly. It's an anomaly. You can just say that. It's just not. It's not like I've never seen it before for this long of a period. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of women and guys be excited for periods of time. That's not a thing. But like this type of this type of daily aggressive hunger yeah. to be the best is like it's because it's not just hunger. It's aggressive hunger. It's like. It's like, I don't no know. No questions. Like, nope, got to do it. Yep. It's a weird, it's a strange thing to see. It is good. It's not, it's how it's supposed to be, you know? Mm -hmm. That's how it should be. I feel like, I feel like if I was talking to like a Kobe Bryant, that's how he'd always be. Michael Jordan is definitely like that. He's an aggressive, like Michael Jordan's like happy guy on the camera and all that stuff. But like, when you talk about relentless aggression to win, holy crap, Michael Jordan's like the pure definition of it. And um, I mean, if you watch, if you want to see something cool, watch that, um, that Michael Jordan series they have on TV. Like he was like, there was one time he was like betting quarters against like security guards and he was like, like in there and he's like trying to beat these guys just to like beat them. Like it's just quarters against the wall, but he, mm -hmm. he can't do anything like that. Like it has to be, he has to win. And it's like this aggressive winning personality, which is really cool. And I think that you look at some of these guys who are like super, super successful. And a lot of people, you know, these days will like talk about these billionaires like in a bad way or whatever, like the, Elon Musk's and and I always use him as an example. I just like him. He's my favorite, like, he's my favorite billionaire, you know, of all time. I guess if there's a billionaire thing, but but um, it's just because of what he went through to get there and how aggressive, like his aggressive pursuit of being like the greatest he can be is so cool to watch. Mm -hmm. I'm like a human, like this just on a scale of human production. It's just crazy that how what he can do. Right. You know, he just built the uh, the loop under the under the uh, L the Las Vegas Convention Center right across oh. the street. Las Vegas Convention Center is like right next to the prep center. Mm -hmm. I rode my scooter in there. So I was trying to find the loop um, on my scooter. <laughs> I got lost. <laughs> but he has this loop. Now it's this underground Tesla loop where you can drive all around. Now he's going to be building one, two casinos, like underground, and then building a road from Las Vegas to LA where it's like driven by Tesla's underground in like, like over 100 miles per hour. So it takes like two hours or something to get here. Like, I mean, it, all that while running Tesla, all that while running SpaceX, while running the... Uh, I forget the the implant one for the, the brain implant one. I forget what it's called. Uh, I, was, I was super into that for a while. I forgot what it's called. But like all of this while just running these massive world changing programs, you know? And it's like, it's just cool to see like what is possible from a human being and what's the difference of him and versus you. Like there's really not a difference. It's just how you choose to apply your your time off, you know? And we talk about being great in like production, you know, um, you think about like how much time we waste, you know. Um, Jordan Peterson was talking about this the other day, where he was talking about like wasted time and wasted um, potential, and like he's like, well, what is potential? And he's like, but potential is basically you like something that's not there yet that you think is possibly there that you have to pull out within, but people judge you based on you not living up to it, right? Mm -hmm. Which is crazy. So to like think about because like you're like you're not living up to your potential. Well, what is my potential? Like, and we don't know. We don't have no idea what it is. So. Um, when, when we talk about like wasted time, he did this, he asked a, uh, a group of students, like how much time do you actually waste a day? And he's like, the consensus was about six hours or so a day of like wasted time where they're watching YouTube videos or things that like watching YouTube videos that made them feel worse. He's like, you've watched, spend like an hour a day watching YouTube videos that make you feel worse and make you feel bad or make you feel like you're, t maybe you're too involved in something that's negative in your life, whatever. He's like, if you just did that by a multiplier of your average income of what you think your potential income would be, let's say it's $25 an hour, which is, he was like, that's pretty nominal. So you're, you're wasting $150 a day that you could be towards you being more whatever. And now you're complaining that you don't have money. You're complaining that you're broke. Well, you're wasting this time that you could be getting. And so you're wasting, he was like, it was like $60,000 a year just in that alone. And so he was like, just making all these points of like, how much time we waste and how much potential we're not living up to based on like production that we could be doing. And I feel like you're one of the few 
um, that do reach your, you know, your close to production levels, you know? I don't think anyone's 100%, but I, um, I would say that I'm, I'm pretty decent at it too in terms of that, but um, it, it definitely makes you think, it makes you realize, like when you look at people who are doing great things, like why are they doing great things? Why am I not doing as great of things? Am I living up to my potential? Am I maximizing my time? Am I living my life with the passion that I need to? Am I even doing something that I'm passionate about, which I'll never reach my potential in that because it's work to me. And all these factors that are lining up for you, I think that as we like lay them out, you're like, no, I am lining up with that. I'm lining up with that. And then look at what the end result is, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone who did this strictly for money or whatever would be on your level because it's too, too much without the passion. Yeah. So I'm starting to realize, especially this year, I'm very, I'm wired so differently sometimes it seems. I am. And um, it's just like, I don't know. I don't like to just sit back and <laughs> like, you know, I'm already qualified for Olympia. I could have yeah. just, eh, just take the rest of the year off to kind of go into an off season. And I'm like, I don't think that way. And I think a lot of girls do once they're qualified. But I'm like, no, 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 no. We got to warm up some more. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to warm it up right now, you know? And I keep going. Even at, after Olympia, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some after Olympia, too. So, like, it's just, I don't know. I'm okay with being, this is my life, like, you know? And, like, we've had those conversations, too, before. Like, you know, people sometimes on the outside will put you down for your passion and say, oh, come on, don't you got something better to do? Like, you know, don't you want to, like, go out with your friends on the weekend or, you know, have kids or whatever? You know, and it's like, that might work for you. But for me, I don't know. I think differently. Yeah. This is my life. I'm obsessed, but I wouldn't have it any other way. But people tried to kind of make you seem like, are you sure you're happy with this? Are you are you happy? Like, are you, are you satisfied with your life right now? There's so much more to life, you know? And I'm like, listen, okay. I'm on a plane every weekend going to a different state, sometimes a different country. Like, believe me, I, I get my excitement, and it doesn't involve alcohol on Saturdays. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I just have a different definition of what makes me happy. I'm just, I don't know, very determined, and very determined to kind of, you know, make fitness fun is another one of my taglines. Make like fitness that. fun. Because yeah. I think there's so many competitors, mostly on the male side, that kind of just portray only the hardcore part of the industry. Like, yeah, I mean, fish and asparagus six times a day because I'm tough. <laughs> it sucks. But you know what? Yeah. Hey, and then everything's worth it, right? You can't just expect every aspect of the journey to be super pleasurable, but at the same time, like, realize what the ultimate goal is in the end. And, you know, I find myself, honestly, having less and less of those bad days. I don't know. I haven't had a bad day in a while. Like, a, you know, every once in a while, like maybe like last year, I'd be like, just today I'm just not motivated. I'm just like, oh, let me just stay home and just, I just need to get myself together. Like, just stay in my pajamas kind of thing. I'd have those every once in a while, but like, I'm just like, maybe it's just such a habit that I'm like, yeah, this is fine with me, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just living my best life. Yeah, no, I think it's cool. I think it's just, I just, I'm hoping people learn the lesson from it too and talking about like just pulling out, pulling out your greatness and reaching deep within you and, you know, making sure that you're doing something that you can be great at because you're passionate about what it is you're doing. And if maybe if your, your work isn't that, but your hobby is and, and you're really going at it and putting in the effort to get the result. And I think that definitely self like reflection on that where people like take a moment and they're like, okay, am I? Do I want to be, do I really want to be great or do I just kind of want to get through in life? Is that like, I just want to be live regular and nothing wrong with that either. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you're one of the few that I hear from on a regular, on a daily basis that they say, I want to be great. I do want to be the next whoever, like do your actions line up with it? Or are you someone who's working out four days a week when you're supposed to work out six? Yeah. Um, are you someone who's good four days a week, but Friday, Saturday, it's, it's parties and clubs and whatever. You know, like the only bar Ashley's going to is the bar at the at the bench <laughs> on, the, on the squat rack uh, on on uh, on Saturdays. So, like, do you do your efforts line up with the goal that you want to achieve? And I think that that is really really important. You know, when I built the prep center, I there was months where I didn't have a day off. Months, like I sold my house, I sold everything I owned to get the first prep center, and like my efforts matched me 
having it. That's what, that's what the, the reality of that was. I didn't pay myself for seven years, like just enough to get by. And like my actions matched it, you know, I definitely, I do deserve it. You know, it's not, there was no luck, anything, you know, it was pure, raw effort and sacrifice to get to that goal, which I didn't even know was the goal at the point. So like you're doing that in a, in a totally different way. And it's, uh, it's cool to see. And I just like, especially with a lot of the younger audience that we have, mm -hmm. they have a, you know, they have ways to go to build that. And I'm like, you know, they need to hear about it. They need to know, yeah. like it, it's, it's, you got to, it does, it has to suck. There's going to be, there's no way to get there without it sucking. Like I slept on my gym floor building this, building the, the gym at one point, you know, like it has to suck. There's going to be, there's no way it's going to be just super smooth and super easy or else it's just everyone. Or everyone would, would be yeah, doing it, Exactly. Right? Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. Everyone. It's like, it has to be hard or it wouldn't be, or everyone would have it. You know, there's just, you have to be going above and beyond to get something that's above and beyond the norm. And so I think that, I hope that the lesson portrays from what you're doing and what you're accomplishing right now. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you realize what you're accomplishing right now too. And like, you can actually see it. You know, I kind of look at it like I'm surprised myself, you know, but I don't really use the comparison of the other, I guess, people that's, you know, competed so and so many times. I'm just like, I still am in shock that I won more than one pro show. <laughs> Cause my, my goal when I first turned pro is I want to win one pro show my goal would be made, my life would be complete, you know, one pro show, and I did it so many times over, like, and every time, like, on stage, like, I'm like, oh my god, like, I, I tear up a little bit, a little bit, I don't cry because I'm sad, I cry because I'm happy, yeah. if I, I, like, hold them back a little bit, I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't, oh my god, you know, and you'd think that after winning 27 times, it'd just be like, oh yeah, just another day, whatever, yeah. no, I get so excited, and I'm like, What's next? <laughs> I want to I want to do this or sometimes I'll be like I won but you know what? I know something I could do better. I'm determined to fix that by the next show. Like, you know what I mean? So although I'm super happy I won, it's icing on the cake. Sometimes I'm like, "Ooh, this is bothering me. I got to fix this. This one little hair flip in my posing or whatever." <laughs> so, I'm just like always so willing and excited to kind of improve too and not just be like, "Okay, you know, I'm good, whatever." Mm. So, I think that's part of it this is the excitement yeah. of like you know what i won but I, I can still be better like i can still be better i know i can get better like yeah so you know and i think this year has been probably the most we've learned too mm -hmm. like all the little things are just yeah. like really really like fine tuning it's really gone really good really well so i don't know i think that that's i think we got our point across today hopefully, hopefully. yeah you know um Anything you want to anything you want to add in there? Oh, you know, I just yeah, like I said, I'm super grateful for everything and those little things. Like even when I get lit, nice little messages and stuff, yeah. like from people that says, you know what, I watched your YouTube video and I got inspired to compete or whatever. Like that means a lot to me too. So, like I don't want people to think just because I've gotten success that like things like that don't matter to me because they definitely do, and that's what keeps me super like passionate about it. I think because I feel like I'm doing something for somebody else you know yeah. it's very rewarding so you know i like to take everyone on the journey with me so yeah. live vicariously through me <laughs> <laughs> I like, watch me on my youtube channel <laughs> i like it the same way too because the, the podcast they're it's funny because it's not like um tiring and like you know the physical way but it's like mentally draining and you got to be right for it and you have to be at least i do i'm, I'm more i guess i'm more I think like you're more, more yeah because like you're more sciencey and you got to be careful with everything yeah and research but the um when it they, the way they say they're saying that uh, a, a chess player burns oh now i'm forgetting the calories i said it in another episode i remembered it the other day but it was like it was a crazy amount of calories per hour it was like 500 and something i think if it was right i was like how's that possible like but they're just thinking so much and so like these are they're you have to like be prepared for them. You have to do them all the time. And, um, but like the, when I do them, I'm like, okay, there's going to be, you know, we've had a good amount of people watch it, which has really been really, thank you guys for doing that, for yeah. watching a little old us. But yeah, it's <laughs> like, you know, if you combine all the platforms, you're talking, you know, 20, 30,000 listens and downloads and stuff on an episode. And it's like, there's a lot of people that are going to be affected or listen to this. And maybe, maybe a couple will be affected by it, you know? And it's like, you want to make sure you're saying the right yeah. things and the, the little things that you guys send me to or and Ashley um, make it worth it you know make it like that study yeah. time that extra time you put into it behind the scenes and like I listen to all these other things to like help give me some more mm -hmm. like um, ideas and insights and whatnot to to help this one be better so 
it's, uh, it makes it all worth it. So I appreciate when you get those messages, especially like when people are telling me, yeah, you know what, I decided to take the leap and chase fitness as my career. I'm like all for it. I'm like the worst, I'm like the worst like businessman trainer ever because I'm like, you guys should all do that. I'm like, you guys should do it. And it's like directly helping my competition. Like, you know, it's so funny, but I'm like, I don't care. I think it's like an awesome life and everyone should at least, if it's not this and it's something else. Um, you know, like the other day, um, Max changed his career and I thought that was super cool. And he's in, he's in, um, he's always been doing like Phoebe's like videos and stuff behind the scenes for Phoebe. And now he's doing full on, that's what he does now. He does videos, like video stuff. And he's doing like, he's like blowing up in Dubai, like doing all this video production stuff. And it's just so cool to see someone like chase what they're passionate about, you know, like he had to switch his complete career to like fully do it. And like, he just threw himself in it. And now he's, he's getting videos. Like he's doing videos like all the time. Like he's, I, I'm, it looks like he's doing really well with it. Like he's always doing something. So it's like so cool to see someone who's been affected by the fitness too. Cause that's, that's full on, you know, mm-hmm. by fitness. So that happened. I think that someone, he's passionate about it. And I think he's gonna be successful because he's passionate about it. Right. So see, like, it, can, it can be many different things in the yeah. fitness industry. It doesn't have to be literally competing. Yeah. You know, even yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. If probably, probably if I didn't own this, I, so I would either, I tell you, I'll do the dog. I would do the dog thing. Cause I love dogs. I'd have like a dog, uh, watching thing or I would do video because video is pretty cool I love video and photography but um anyway I guess that's I have one more thing to say yeah. I would not be where I'm at either if it weren't for you so thanks for being so motivating for me and you get just as excited as I do about shows so thank you for that and thank you for putting me in my place when I get too excited <laughs> too. well you know what actually <laughs> that goes I think that's been a mutual benef- benefiting relationship because you've showed me a lot too and I'm very appreciative of it and that's why I always want to make sure you feel special while you're here because you're like the queen of the queen of the castle here for oh. sure. And uh, no, because because there's something about here's the thing too about being great is that you're never going to do it alone. I don't I don't think anyone's ever been great's been doing it alone. And I've told her before. I told you before that our, our, I oftentimes refer to Ashley as Mike Tyson, which it doesn't make sense, but I'll explain it. So every coach, like every coach in the world like boxing coach and I grew up in the neighborhoods where there's like a lot of boxing gyms and I you know I went there a few times and it's like it's very rugged very you know it's it's just whoever's your local guys kind of thing and you just hope that one day every boxing coach just hopes one day that Mike Tyson walks in the gym and they're like I just need the clay just give me the clay and I can create something with that you know and that's what any coach wants they just want the clay man but you got to have the clay you know and um, you were, you've been great for a long time, and you're obviously the clay. I'm the clay. Yeah, and it's high been, grade, a high grade. That's not play doh. It's some high um, level stuff. Yeah. Like that's a specialty store, like in the spot, ordered like, from you know, Europe type yeah. of clay. Like they make only like a couple pounds a year type yeah. of thing. <laughs> you know, so like, like it's with little glitter pieces in it. Yeah, you know, and it's like you need pink, pink with glitter, yes, yeah. rainbow probably more than anything. Your <laughs> bright colors, uh, with with clay. So like. It's been very, it's been awesome to be able to work with someone who's like, will do it for a long period who can, who's actually reaching their potential. Because everyone always talks about that potential, potential, potential. What is it? Are you realizing your potential? And I'm like, I can say without a doubt that you are reaching your potential. Like, 100%. Like, there's not more you can do. And I think at every show we get into and we do, you, we could walk off the stage saying, okay, maybe we made a mistake. Maybe something happened. Maybe I said, do too many carbs and your waistline blew out or whatever. Maybe we came to East Coast too late and you're holding water because of the the moisture over there seems to, you know, have a little bit of an effect on you. So we got to go there early, like little mistakes, you know, but it's never, we could have done more. Like we should have done more. You should have worked harder. You shouldn't have had that cheat meal. You should have, Mm -hmm. shouldn't have went out with your friends, whatever, you know? And it's like, it's always, that's the thing when you can walk off the stage and say, Hey, I couldn't have done any more then that's a win. It doesn't matter how you place. It's yes, a win. Exactly. You know? I think some of my happiest moments too were I didn't even get first, but I thought I looked amazing because I fixed something or I my physique improved. So not even all about the W's, but like just, you know, seeing myself improve is super exciting for me. Yeah. The only time I get down on myself is like having those like stupid mistake ones. Or if I felt like I could have tried harder or something, which I actually haven't had that one because I think I pretty much give it all I need to, but yeah. like Sometimes I do make those stupid mistakes on stage, like, 
you know? Yeah. Like with my posing or something, and I'm like, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> I hate myself. Well, not literally, but I yeah. get mad at myself. <laughs> yeah. I love myself. Just don't worry. Yeah. But like, I'm just like, Ashley, what the heck are you thinking? You could do yeah. better. I remember that after the class you told me. Oh, like, yeah. That was like I the was, first thing you said. You're like, mad I, at myself. You like text me right after. You're like, I, I've missed up my routine. <laughs> I so know. bad, right? But hey, <laughs> one of those things, yeah. probably needed it in the long run. Because I wouldn't have worked so hard to try to improve. I kind of, yeah. if I would have won that show, I would would have just been like, oh, yeah, this works. Let's we'll, we'll keep it. Yeah, so, you so kick in the butt. Yeah, and that's the good thing about you competing all the time. Because you imagine you just doing the Olympia and then doing mm. that at the Olympia, you know, yeah. type of thing. And it's like, you know, so totally. Yeah. Do you do you know what the text I sent you the other day was? I think you missed it or skipped over it. <laughs> we sometimes we'll build them up and then she'll be like, go to the top of these texts because yeah, you're, you're, you're not it. reading the top one. No, but. I'll I'll just recap it because it goes perfectly with what we're saying though. I, you said, congratulations, Ashley, you're making history. And I said, no, no, we're making oh, history. I, did. I can't do this alone. And I, I can't, I couldn't do this alone. So thank you. You know, no, it takes, takes a team, takes it, all these people and, and mostly you, but you know, the high tech helps with the traveling and everything. <laughs> well, but. I think, I think you're a very rare breed and I think you could, but I'll take that compliment and thank you very much for it. I appreciate it. But you're you're definitely an anomaly. And I think that believing when people, I think surrounding yourself with the right circle is another thing that we, we, we should talk about one day too, because surrounding yourself with the right circle is super important because I've had a few key moments in my career would have helped me get here. And one of them, one of them was with you too, believing in me too, just mm -hmm. as much as I believe in you, which is really great. And that helps, you know, it helps a lot. All this, you know, all this, these, these things have come because of everything, especially we've done together too. Um, but like Jeff Taylor, who believed in me a long time ago, and he told me I need to stop slowing myself down. Like you have these people that will like be coaches that are sometimes not even coaches, just coaches for moments, you know? And Jeff Taylor was one for me. I remember that was a key conversation for me. And I was doing, it was like, man, it was like a decade ago. So Jeff Taylor is the chairman of the NPC in Colorado. And he, we, we did lunch one time and he was like, he's like, and I was like, yeah. He's like, why do you keep bringing only like three, four people, five people to a show. And I was like, ah, I just, you know, quality control and this and that. And I was like, wasn't sure of myself back then. Um, and he's like, he's like, Adam, you're, you haven't, and it was because I was tracking it at that point. And I was like obsessed with having every single person placed. And we we're up to 73 people, 73 showings in a row placed. And I was like, no, I can get to a hundred. I can get to a hundred people in a row will place. But I was like being so strategic and so like just bringing very few people. And he's like, he's like, you're not allowing yourself to to reach your potential because you're limiting not just yourself, but you're not even letting the clients come in in any shape less than third. And they're not reaching, you're not giving them the shot to be their best too, because they need to learn from this stuff, you know? And like they need to, he's like, you know enough now where you don't need to keep studying every single second of the day. Because I was obsessed with it. All I did was study. He's like, you don't need to, he's like, you can at, be at the point now where you're, everything you need to know, like you don't need to, you don't need to learn anymore if you didn't want to. You know enough now to be one of the best but you got to allow yourself to be the best and you got to stop restricting yourself, the growth, what it's going to take for you to be the best and, and start focusing on that more so than just books and science and putting out only overall champions at every show. And cause you can't do that. It's not going to happen every time. And like, I was like, it like was, I had to like sit back and be like, you know, he's right. Cause I'm, I am. And then not just am I holding myself back, but I'm holding people back because maybe I'm wrong. And maybe sometimes they could have won the overall in a shape that I thought they would have got third in, you know what I mean? So like, it was kind of cool, and there's these moments that we have like in life that kind of like you remember, and he probably doesn't even remember that, but like you remember, and it's like it has a huge effect on you, and that's one of them right. for sure for me, and like people just believing in me, and and you believing in me too, you know, and mm -hmm. like it's been, it's definitely the fruits of people believing in you, and all my clients, all the people that we have work with us, like they wouldn't enroll with us unless they believed that we could get them to the next level. So I appreciate you guys, the people who are doing that, and people who are listening to this believe in us too. Yeah. Well, why would you waste an hour listening to it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of cool. It's definitely cool to be, we surround ourselves with the right people. Right, totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just so you know, never forget, like, yeah, I, I always thank you so much, but <laughs> hopefully you don't get annoyed by it. No, but I know, no. I know I'm a lot of work because I compete so much. I don't think I'm needy, but I think I require a lot of attention just because I compete a lot. So thank you for taking all the time and, you know, working with me. So. Oh, no, I love it. And it's, it's cool because it, it does change the model. I will say that it changes the model, but I like it so much better. And I've, I've like decided that I'm so much happier with this model where me and you focus a lot. We have very few pros. I, I you know, we travel, we do stuff all the time together. And it's like, it's so much nicer than how, like I used to have like, I'd have like 20 pros and always be like something. 
every weekend out of like waking up at weird times. And it was just so hard that way. And it wasn't so like, mm, it wasn't as close, you know, it was like, it was more, it was more just like client coach. It wasn't like friend thing. And it like really taught me that like, you know what, I think that to get, get to that level, you need that closer kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. and working closer and having more fun. And I just like, I don't know, I really like it. I'm not going to ever change it now. <laughs> it's great. No, it's cool, man. I love it. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, with the way we do things and how often we compete, there's just no way of having, you know, 30 pros or whatever. Like, that yeah. it's just not possible. But it's, uh, I, I would not have it any other way. So I appreciate it too. So anyway, with that, guys, we're getting all smooshy. So <laughs> thank you so much for listening, for watching, for all you do. We will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>